Hi, thank you for joining us for today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. For the month of November, we are focusing on the generosity challenge. The scripture we are looking at this week is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. The sermon notes, known here as Life Notes, can be downloaded at calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, here is Pastor Chad Garrison. I invite you to take a seat uh, and uh, grab your Bible, your Bible app, and turn to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 6 is the passage I'd love for you to look up and join us in. And uh, if you're in one of our, our rooms, if you're at one of our campuses and you don't have a Bible, that's okay. Grab one of the Bibles that is provided for you. If you're at our Parker campus, there's a table in the back of the room. It's full of Bibles. You can get up right now and go grab one and turn to page 1025. If you're at our Sweetwater campus, you can just reach around in the, in the chairs around you, find a Bible, and turn to page 1025. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible, um, sorry, but we can, we can fix that. Because if you're at one of our campuses and you don't have a Bible, you just take one home with you. It's our gift to you. If you're joining us online and you'd like a Bible, message your service host or email us at calvaryaz.com. We'd be glad to get you a Bible because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, does this uh, sound a little bit familiar? Money, 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 money. She works hard for the money. Money, it's a crime but you can't buy me love. And I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. See, today we're talking about an issue that is so intertwined in our lives and our culture that we sing about it. We make TV shows and movies and infomercials about it. There are magazines printed uh, telling us how you can make more of it. Blogs you can listen to. And of course, we're talking about are, are you guys serious? You, you like hesitated on that one. Like, I have no idea what we're talking about. Could you give us some more clues, some more hints? So what are we talking about? Okay, well, you see, if we're, if we're followers of Jesus, if we believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God, Savior of the world, if we believe that Jesus actually died for our sins and was raised from the dead, and we've made a conscious decision to surrender our lives to following Jesus, then uh, we're gonna talk about what he has to say about generosity, okay? Now, if you're not yet a follower of Jesus, listen in, because we want you to become a follower of Jesus, and we want you to kind of figure out what this is gonna cost you all the way around, okay? Because we're all about following Jesus, about, you know, because he's saved us, and he's rescued us. But if you're a follower of Jesus, then I just want you to know uh, this is gonna be challenging to some. Okay, and, and, and uh, we're not really talking about money. We're talking about Jesus on generosity, talking about the generosity challenge. And we're gonna look at, at what he teaches about the principles uh, of how to manage our money, what to do with our money. And, and if you're a follower of Jesus and he saved you and you know you're forgiven of your sins, you know that heaven is your home, then I would guess you would maybe want to listen to Jesus. It's just a, an assumption I'm making because he's the savior of your soul. He's the one who blesses your life and he would like you to know what he thinks about this. And uh, now some of you are probably thinking, well, you know, I don't think church should talk about money. You should stick to the religious stuff, the biblical stuff, like, you know, believing in God and prayer and love and all that good, you know, spiritual things. All right, so we're gonna play a little game. I want, no, seriously, we're going to play a game, okay? And, and you're not going to, you know, give me your answers, but whoever's sitting close to you, now you're having a competition, okay? You're going to have to write down some numbers. You can pull out your phone. You can, you know, pull it up to the, you know, something. You can do the numbers, and you guys can compare and see, because loser has to buy, okay? <laughs> Talking about money, come on, put your money where your mouth is right now, all right? So here we go. Uh, how many times in the Bible do you think the word believe is used. Okay, the word believe in the, in the Bible, how many times do you think it is used in total from Genesis through Revelation? Write a number down, you know, type a number out on your phone, show it to the person next to you. Remember, you can't be over the number. This is like Price is Right. Okay, can't be high. Okay, so how many times? Okay, you ready? The answer is believe is used 272 times in the Bible. Okay, anybody get it? Okay, oh without having my sermon notes? Uh, no, you are Okay, wait, we're not done. How many times do you think the word prayer 
is used in the Bible. Okay, write out a number. How many times does the Bible talk about praying? How many times does it talk about prayer in, in Scripture? Genesis through Revelation. Okay, you got a number? Just show it to the other person. No cheating, because we're in church. Okay, the number is 371 times. 371. All right, somebody got close over here. So, and, and, and here's the thing. That's more than like once a day. It's talking about praying, like more than once a day. Okay, that's good. How many times do you think the word love the subject of love. We're told to love each other, love our neighbors and stuff, all that. How many times in the Bible is it use the word love? Okay, show them the number. Let's, let's write it down. You guys aren't writing it down. Come on, come on. Participate, it's more fun if you participate. He's gonna buy you dinner anyway, Becky, it's good. All right, the number is 714 times. 714 times. Anybody come close, anybody? Got some people out there really close, okay. All right, there's, a, there's been a progression. You've probably noticed that, right? How many times is the word give or the subject of giving mentioned in the Bible? How many times is the word give or the subject of giving mentioned in the Bible? Okay, have you got your number down? You think it's high enough? 2,162 times. 2,100 and anyone come close? A anyone? Oh, okay, we, got, we have a winner right there. Buy your dinner, okay? Uh, and uh, so, so here's the thing. Jesus knew that money, that possessions, that what we do with stuff was gonna be such a big deal for his followers. He talked about it a lot. The Bible talks about it a lot. But Jesus spent 15% of his teachings were about money. That's how significant it was, 15%. Uh, so today, I wanna share with you the generosity principles that we operate, operate on, that we promote, that we encourage as a ministry here at Calvary. Uh, and and uh, you're in Luke chapter six, we're gonna use that as our basis. But I, I challenge you, since we're talking about the generosity challenge, I challenge you to listen and stop running. I challenge you to listen and, and consider what Scripture says. And, and if it's a challenge to you personally and how you're following Jesus, then you wrestle with God over that. Okay, because so I'm just going to tell you what my convictions are, biblically based, about uh, generosity. And so the first thing I want you to know is that God doesn't need your money. God doesn't need your money. Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. You know what that means? That means that God owns it all. God owns the world. He owns all the people in the world. He's God. We're not. Uh, we're his subjects, if you will. He's the King of kings, Lord of lords. And so he has possession of everything. God is not running out of money. God is not running short on money. God does not need to borrow money from you. God owns everything. Okay, he created it all. He created it from nothing. If he can create it from nothing, eh, you know, come on. Does he really need to borrow $20? <laughs> I mean, is, he's not that friend that's gonna call you up and go, hey, I need a loan. No, so look, God doesn't need your money. He's God, doesn't need anything. That's part of being God. And because God doesn't need your money, the church doesn't need your money. In spite of what the televangelists say, in spite of those, you know, desperate, you know, invitations from all kinds of ministries that you're going to get in the next 60 days, church doesn't need your money. That, I mean, it, it really doesn't. This is, and some of you are like, I'm really liking this sermon so far. <laughs> See, biblically and theologically, the church never needs your money. Why is that? That's because the church is the bride of Jesus. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, this is just the Apostle Paul. He's writing about marriage and everything. And he says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Okay, that, that, that's a challenge to man. We're not talking about that challenge. What we're talking about is the fact that, that Jesus identifies his love for the church with the love of a husband for his wife. 
In Revelation 19, there's a great you know, celebration. It's called the wedding feast of the lamb. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're gonna be there hanging out, having good food. It's gonna be great. But, but here's the thing. The church is Jesus' bride. You know why God was so upset with the people of God in the Old Testament? Because they were worshiping other idols and, and he, he called it adultery. He didn't say it's like adultery. He said, you're cheating on me with these other gods. You're an unfaithful wife. I mean, that's what he's saying. So I just want you to understand if the church is the bride of Jesus and Jesus is God in the flesh, you know, God the Son, that means Jesus owns everything. And if Jesus owns everything, do you think he's gonna take care of his bride? Some of you are like, I don't know. Uh, do you think Jesus is gonna take care of his bride? Yeah, yeah he is. I mean, it's just, it, it's one of those things that it makes perfect sense. But we grew up in this, this mindset where, you know, churches are always kind of like begging and hitting people up. And people are, are like, I don't wanna go to church because church is gonna talk about money. That's what they're gonna talk about. They're gonna ask for more money. So um, look, that's one of the reasons we don't pass the offering plate. No, no, nobody passes the offering plate anymore because COVID killed that. But uh, <clears throat> it's like, I don't wanna touch that. They touch that. We've been doing offering boxes since 1999. Okay, we, we stopped passing the offering plate for, it was cool to stop passing the offering plate. It was before online giving was a thing. All those different things. You know why? Because I just said, look, we don't wanna in, insinuate to anybody that we need their money. We want you to give voluntarily. We don't want to be like, oh, we need it. So pass the plate. Let's pass it again. We didn't get enough. Hey, you know, we're not doing that. See, we don't want to communicate in any way that we need your money. I mean, after all, God owns it all. It's not really yours. He's just bar letting you use it uh, so that, uh, you know, you can honor him with it. So generosity principles, number one, God doesn't need your money. Generosity principle number two, the church doesn't need your money. Like I said, some of you are really liking this message right now. But just wait, there's more. <laughs> okay, the third point is simply this. We need to give. We need to give. Okay, listen to Jesus. Luke chapter six. I'm just gonna look at verse 38. It's all about reciprocity, but I want you to hear this. Jesus says, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, we put into your lap. That's kind of weird. It has to do with grain being measured out, okay? So don't think in terms of money. They're talking about like, you know, uh, you're getting a bushel of wheat, you know, and trying to measure it out. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Okay, given it will be given to you. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, I know that some would say, that they need to give less than others. Uh, you know, maybe a lot less. And I just wanna share with you two reasons why you need to consider a life of generosity, where I wanna challenge you with a life of generosity. Two rational, completely sane thoughts that I hope will make sense to you. First is this. We were created by God to be generous. We were created to be generous. Uh, I don't know if you've heard this before, but I'm guessing you have. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You guys ever hear that one before? Yeah, you were made in the image of God. And, and by the way, that's, that's why loving is part of your heart's desire. Because God loves. It's why joy and laughter and celebration is so natural. Because joy is part of God's character. I mean, that's why, you know, one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. So, I mean, it's just so natural. And, and this is why we feel right when we're generous. You know, you pick up one of the packs that the kids made and you give it to someone, you're gonna have a smile on your face. I, I mean, you know, if, if you have something to give and you see somebody, you give, you're like, hey, I feel great. Why? Because you were made to be generous. You were made in the image of God. That's not just true for us, uh, that's true for everybody in this world. And that's why people do generosity. And, and by the way, just think about it. How generous is God? He gave us this world and all the blessings that are in it. He gave us Jesus. Maybe you've heard this verse too. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. 
By the way, if you didn't catch it in that, salvation is a gift that God gave us. It is not something that you earn. It is not something that you deserve. In fact, the apostle Paul put it this way, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, you know, giving is part of God's character. So if you're a follower of Jesus, then, you know, we're family. Now it's like, oh, we gotta, we gotta do what Jesus did. We gotta be givers. We were created to be generous. And then, of course, if you're a follower of Jesus, God gave the Holy Spirit to live in you. The moment you confess Jesus as Lord, God put the Holy Spirit in your life to, to teach you, to comfort you, to convict you of sin. Okay, that's part of the equation to give you gifts to serve him and also to guarantee your salvation. That's a pretty cool gift, isn't it? See, and, and, and so God believes in you. He says, I'm gonna give you myself. And, and so we are fulfilling part of our eternal purpose and we are connecting with our heavenly father who made us by being generous. In other words, I'm just telling you right now, you were created to be generous in the same way that you were created to love in the same way that you were created to worship God. Those are all connected. Which is why when we are selfish or stingy or greedy, we are rejecting our purpose. We're running from God and we're denying the person God created us to be. When we're being selfish, when we're being stingy, when we're being greedy, when we're holding on, then we're basically saying, God, I don't wanna be who you created me to be. And Jesus, I don't wanna follow you. That, that's, that's the equivalent. See, to live as a son or daughter of God is to live generously. It's just part of our family characteristics. And, and by the way, this is why joy is directly connected to generosity. I, I, I was thinking about this. Um, I've hung out with a lot of curmudgeons, people who are kind of like hanging on to stuff, you know, like my, my stuff. I'm worried about people getting get my stuff. They're not very happy people. Hey, have you ever noticed that? You know, they're kind of grumpy, suspicious. I've also hung out with a lot of generous people, and generous people tend to be happy. They, they tend to have that joy. They tend to just be like, hey, I want to bless people, and look, there's an opportunity to bless people. And it doesn't have to be in big ways, but they, you know, they're, they're just thinking about generous. And so if you're, if you're looking for more joy in your life, you may want to think about more generosity. So you were created to be generous part of your spiritual DNA. And the other reason that I want to encourage you to, to accept the generosity challenge is because we are blessed by giving. I mean, look, I am all about scripture. You know, you guys know that as a church, we believe the Bible is the inerrant inspired word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. You guys know that, right? That's why we tell you if you read and apply God's word, God will change your life. So, and, and I'm kind of a Jesus follower, so when Jesus says something, I listen. It's kind of one of those things that, that's really natural for me, it, it, but we have to learn to do that. And, and I don't know if you heard this recently or not, but Jesus said, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, so it'll be put in your lap. Still, that's weird. I don't care how many times I read that. But this makes perfect sense. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, I will just confess, this has been abused by a lot of churches and a lot of ministries, okay? It is not a get-rich-quick spiritual scheme. Okay, God does not, you know, if you give so much money, he's not gonna multiply it and give it back to you. That's not how this works, okay? But the truth is there and it's powerful. So here's the truth. We get to decide the quantity of blessings that we receive from God, okay? Okay? Yeah, we get to decide the quantity, but God decides the type of blessing. All right, I mean, this, this, is the, this is just the arrangement. So we can decide how much we get blessed. God's gonna decide the ways that he's going to bless us. Okay, do you, do you see how that equation works? You don't get to decide both, but you get to decide one. Now, in our brain-damaged, sin-addled way of thinking, we tend to want the least valuable blessings. Huh? Just think about this. Go follow with me. We tend to want the least valuable blessings. What are the things we're praying for the most? Um, 
Well, the thing that people ask prayer for the most out loud is health, right? I'm sick. Pray for me. By the way, I'm sick. You can pray for me. Um, no, I mean, seriously, I've, I've been battling this upper respiratory thing. That's why I wasn't hanging out with you guys beforehand. I don't want to make people sick. I don't think I, I'm contagious. I mean, but at the same time, uh, it, it doesn't feel good. So, you know, yeah, I, what, what I like prayer, sure. But, but here's the thing. I grew up going to Baptist prayer meetings, they're the most boring things in the world because all they sounded like was just a recitation of people's health issues. And as a like, kid and teenager, I was like, nope, check please, this is not good. No one was praying for the loss of the world. Nobody was praying for reconciliation in broken marriages and broken families. Nobody was praying for like, you know, people to be saved occasionally. That was kind of at the end of the list. Oh yeah, let's pray for these guys. They were all praying for people you know, to get better. And, and look, if you have prayer needs and you want somebody to pray for you to be healed, that is perfectly acceptable. God is willing to hear that and answer those prayers sometimes. That's why we have a prayer team here at the front after the service. So whatever your needs are, you can come and they will pray with you. We have prayer cards in the seats. You can fill those out. We will pray for you no matter what your needs are. It's a real need. But I want you to understand something. If God makes you better, you're still going to die. Ain't nobody getting out of here with the body you're in. Okay, do you understand? Even if Jesus comes back and you get raptured, that body is not going with you. Yeah, some of you are like, praise God. It ain't happening. I mean, Pastor Pete preached on it a few weeks ago. You get a new body. The corruptible puts on the incorruptible and the perishable puts on the imperishable. That is a cool promise. This body is not going with you. It is appointed unto man once to die and then judgment. And if you know Jesus, you get a new body. It's never going to get sick. It's never going to get old. It's never going to get hurt. It's never going to die. I like that. But we're like, God, if you bless me with health. Hey, look, health is a wonderful thing. I choose health over unhealth. I'd rather die healthy, okay? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, okay? And you probably would too. It's quicker that way usually. So... But here's the thing, you know, but, but we, we, you know, we act like this is the biggest prayer in the world. Oh, we got health. You know, if you have health, you have everything. That's not true because you're still going to die. I'm just, you know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here, but this is just truth. Okay, this is scripture. And, and I want you guys to hear this. So we pray for health. And then the other thing we pray for is money. I know we don't usually ask that out loud, but deep in our hearts, we're like, God, I need to pay the bills. God, I want to win the lottery. God, can I just get, you know, hey, look, we, we want more, okay? Every, everyone in this room has enough, but we want more, okay? Because greed is part of our, our sin nature. And, and we want to get rich, which is why so many preachers abuse this verse and promise you that if you give more to the church, then, then God will make you rich. And it doesn't happen that way. By the way, you realize you're already, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're already a child of God, which means you're sharing in his inheritance. You're already, you know, stinking rich in the kingdom. So, you know, we're like, God, can I have more of this stuff that's not gonna last? He's like, you know we use that for asphalt in heaven, right? <laughs> Don't get it. I mean, come on. We ask for things that are temporal, and God wants to bless us with things that are eternal. He wants to bless us with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. He wants to bless us with freedom and, and, and joy and just all of this, this, these things. And we're like, yeah, can I have more money? Um, so we ask for the wrong things, but, but I, I, I pray that this truth takes your breath away we decide the quantity of blessing by our generosity. Give and it will be given to you. The measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And, and I gotta show you what that looks like. And a lot of you that have been around Calvary for a long time know what I'm about to do. But I gotta, for those of you that are new, you'll have fun. Okay? So, yeah, somebody just said, said the, the, the thing. This is about ice cream. Look, if you've been around Calvary any length of time, you know that ice cream is my addiction, Okay? And, uh, and not just any ice cream, I'm very particular. Chocolate peanut butter is my flavor. And, uh, and so um, trying to illustrate this, I, I, th I think in terms of ice cream, let's just say you invite me over to your house for ice cream. And that doesn't get me all excited, but then you say, no, pastor, I've got the best chocolate peanut butter you've ever tasted. 
Okay, now I'm interested. And you're like, but I'm a germaphobe and I'm a little bit weird, so uh, you gotta bring your own bowl. And because I'm a germaphobe, you only get one serving. Okay, it's your house, you can be weird. I'm comfortable with that. If those are the rules, your house, your rules, can I just tell you, I'm not showing up with something like this. I mean, this is probably the, you know, a single scoop serving at some, some you know, ice cream place that they'll overcharge you for. But uh, like, heck no, I'm not showing up with that. That's not like a ice cream bowl anyway. It might be a cute dessert bowl, but it's not. Like, and I'm not showing up with something like this. Yeah, see, this is cute, right? It's like a fake ice cream waffle cone bowl. I've never eaten ice cream out of this because it's not big enough, right? Now, I'm not even gonna show up with my normal ice cream bowl. I mean, it holds about a pint, okay? So it's just a normal plastic bowl because I don't wanna break anything and ruin the ice cream. So, uh, so I should, but you know, I'm like, seriously, if it's that good, I'm not showing up with that. I might show up with this, right? Because that's probably a quart, you know, you can hold a lot of ice cream in that. But if you're that weird and I only get one serving and it's that good, oh no, I'm showing up with this, baby. We're gonna have some ice cream. You know what I mean? And by the way, I confess, I have eaten ice cream out of this bowl. Not proud of it, but it's true. Now, I, I share this ridiculous illustration for, for this reason. I want you to get the truth that Jesus is talking about. He says, look, give and, and it will be given to you for the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Okay, that, that's a truth that ought to resonate with us. We ought to get that. You're gonna reap what you sow. And, and so here's what's happening in our life. Every one of us wants God to bless us more. Do you want God to bless you more? Okay, if we want God to bless us more, then why are we showing up with this bowl? Oh, does it make sense now? You see, what's happening is we're showing up with this kind of bowl, because this is how generous we are, and we go, God, pour out your blessings on me, and God's like, I poured them out, you just can't hold very many of them. You need a bigger bowl. And we're like, God, I, I want more, how come they have more than me? He's like, because they have a bigger bowl. And, and, you're, and we get upset and we get jealous and we gotta get stingy. It's like, well, I, I don't have enough to share because this is all I get. And, and, and we get scarcity mindset because we're the ones who are determining the quantity of blessing that God is giving us by our generosity. And a lot of us are showing up with, well, actually a lot of us are showing up with thimbles. Um, <laughs> the thing that makes sense is to show up with this. Actually, wheel in the 55 gallon drum and say, okay, God, fill her up. And it's as easy as deciding if we're gonna accept the generosity challenge and say, God, I'm gonna give you more. I'm gonna bless people in Jesus' name more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest in the kingdom more because I want you to bless me. And God, I'll trust you with how you're gonna bless me because I can't outgive you. And because you love me so much that you gave me everything in Jesus. And you've given me eternal life. And, and so... I'm going to come with a big bowl and get filled up with blessings. Now, some of you are going, is it really that simple? Is that really how it works? And, and I would just say, well, what did Jesus say? I mean, what did he tell us? You know, give and it will be given to you for the measure you use will be measured back to you. And so stop complaining to God if all you're bringing is this and adjust your life to fit the teachings of Jesus. Now, the question then comes down to this. Are you gonna make room in your life for more of God's blessings? Are you going to choose to grow in generosity? Uh, in other words, you're going to take whatever level of giving, whatever generosity you have, you're going to take it to the next level. You're going to move up to the next size bowl. See, there's some of you in this room that you, you really, honestly, you haven't given anything. I don't know who you are because I don't see what anybody gives in this church. I don't care. I just figure you're brilliant. You're going to do what Jesus says. 
But, um, but here's the thing. Statistics say that the average American evangelical Bible-believing Christian gives less than 3% of their income to God in any form of charity. So I'm just going by the average, going by the stuff, and just going, okay, some of you give a lot, some of you give some, some of you give nothing. So if you give nothing, why don't you give something? See what God does. If you give a little bit, why don't you decide, hey, God, I'm going to give you a, a certain percentage of my income, whatever. It is. Like, like, God asked for 10%, but, um, you know, start with two. I don't care. Start with one. Start with just get regular, faithful in your giving. See what God does. This is a challenge, by the way. Some of you have been really faithfully giving for a long time, but you've never really actually practiced tithing, which is 10%, and, and, and maybe that's a place where God wants to challenge you. Some of you have been tithing comfortably for years, maybe even decades, and maybe God's saying, hey, up the ante. Get a bigger bowl. Roll that drum in here. Let me see, let, let me show you what I can do in your life. But the question is, what are we going to do for the challenge that God gives us? Will you choose to grow in generosity? And, and the question is, if you answer no, is can you really afford not to be generous? Because the words of Jesus, let them ring in your ears, give, and it will be given to you. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Father, thank you for giving us grace. We don't deserve it. I mean, we're the ones who ran away from you. We're the ones who rejected your authority. We're the ones who defied your wisdom. We're the ones who chased other gods. And yet, you have loved us and you have saved us through Jesus. You've given us life eternal. You've adopted us as sons and daughters. You know, you didn't even just let us be slaves. You made us children. And so we want to respond by saying yes to you. And so, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit that resides in every believer would be speaking to us, challenging us at our point of generosity. Because, God, it makes perfect sense for every one of us to come to you with a bigger bowl. But we need your help to do that. We need your courage. We need your faith. So meet us in this place. Change our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God doesn't need your money, and neither does His church. But we are created to be generous, and He blesses us when we display our faith and reliance on Him by giving. In an effort to encourage you in your walk with the Lord, we post daily three to five minute devotional videos on our Facebook and YouTube accounts. You can sign up to receive them by visiting calvaryaz.com forward slash Devo. That's D-E-V-O. Well, that'll do it for today. Have a terrific week, and we'll be back again next weekend. Bye-bye.